Hola, ladies and gentlemen, cast. Welcome to the Spain track guide and set up the track that got me into sim racing almost 10 years ago. Well, actually, it's it's been 10 years probably. But yeah, here we are for a beautiful lap around the Circuit de Catalunya Barcelona. Or is it the other way? Circuit de Barcelona Catalunya. I have to Google that up. But either way, we are here for a track guide followed by two setups. Uh, one from me and one for our good buddy in the server, Mavis. And then we'll leave you for a full speed hot lap at the end. And very quickly, thank you to all channel members and subscribers for supporting the channel in the way you love it too. Uh, join us channel member if you love to or otherwise you, know, you can always leave a like and subscribe uh, to help the alg algorithm push out these uh, videos a little bit more. And let's get into the setup for Spain. Um, it's a very long-ish track, right? A lot of long corners like you can see here. You will need to make sure you get the turn in right for every corner and then you can get the exit right. Carry a lot of speed on the entry and the exit. And now to start your lap and end the lap, it's well the same way. Heading down into turn one, you want to spot this white area, this white little uh, exit road between the 50 and 100 meter board. That's going to be your braking point. Uh, don't go over that curb, otherwise bottoms of the car. Into turn one, take half of this curb, avoid that yellow sausage. Turn two, it's either you take this curb fully or you completely avoid it like they do in real life. Uh, either way, uh, you have to make sure the car is straightened out on the exit and stay tight to the right here. Take a little bit of that curb to stay on the inside for qualifying. In the race, you can let the car run wide. And now into turn four. Uh, yeah, look for that 50 meter mark or just as you go under the bridge, down to fourth or fifth gear and let the car run wide again on the exit. Similar theme throughout the corner. Look for the 50 meter bar or the black advertising mode on the right hand side as you go past that that's your braking point and then once again you want to be braking tight and get the car turned in early so fast in and fast out sort of that's the team here use all the exit curb keep the car straight and now quickly down to turn seven and eight here uh, brake as the curb starts down to fourth or fifth gear whichever you prefer and stay tight on the entry on the first left don't take that yellow sausage curb be careful of that but you have to take this curb in order to gain time and on the exit avoid going too far out to the sausage curbs keep the car straight keep the momentum going and stay tight on the entry it will gain you a little bit of time but you need to be careful not to take more than that open up drs on the exit of turn 9 here now heading into turn 10 spot that 100 meter bot or the change in curb color uh, on the bottom here from red to green that's your braking reference down to third gear or fourth gear on the entry stay tight on the entry avoid the yellow sausage again up to third or fourth gear and as this curb on the left hand side ends when you're in fifth gear that's where you want to throw the car in and just very little brakes look at the brake trace there just a little bit of brake to get the car turned in and immediately back on the power very quickly take only half the curb and spot that black box or that red and white curb as it's about to end. Turn in early, let the car run wide. Take half of the curb and turn in and let the car do its job with the downforce and across the line. That is going to be a fast lap around Spain. Uh, well, a beautiful track, but it all depends on the downforce, how much confidence you have going into these fast corners. And, uh, you know, it takes a little bit of time to get used to this car handling as well. So I'm pretty sure there's probably a tenth or two to be found on a perfect lap. But we are on a race-ish setup, not here chasing world records. Speaking of the setup, let's get into the first one here that I used, which is going to be the high downforce version 5043 on the wings. You can use a little bit lower if you want to. Um, but yeah, um, definitely downforce is better. If you want lower, you can go about five clicks down on each. It's good for the race as well, especially in DRS trains. Uh, you can play around the front wing if you want more or less. It's up to your personal preference. If you can handle the oversteering car, go for it. Uh, the only issue is as usual, you know, uh, as the race goes on, the car tends to become oversteering. So you may want to start your car with one or two less front wing, which is what I'm doing with my setup here. Um, 
initially it's understeery, but as the steering goes on, it becomes stable. Uh, same thing for the transmission. I'm using 80 on throttle because there are a lot of long corners here. You want the car to keep turning. At the same time, you don't want to understeer. If you're using 100, you may notice that the car will tend to understeer on the exit uh, if you don't get your turn in right. So 80 or 90 is just a little safe if you want to mess around with your you know, turning in points, maybe even 70 if you need. For the off throttle, 10 for the qualifying and then in the race you can go up to 20 or 25 and keep engine braking at 100% all the time. It's, it's going to help you recover more ERS anyway. Suspension geometry is, uh, well, ugh. <laughs> the same story as usual. Uh, no changes to this, all minimum. It's the fastest way to set up your car for 99.9% .9 of the time. And now we move on to suspension where you can make a lot of difference with how you set up the car. So because there's a lot of elevation change here in Spain, you will notice that um, if you use a low ride height, you will lose a lot of time going over those curbs or bumps in the track or just elevation changes like turn 9 for example, the flat, flat out right hander. Um, that's one of the places where you can lose lap time for no reason by having a, a low ride height. So because of that and some adjustments uh, to cater to the track, I've gone for a quite high ride height, 25. And to compensate for that understeer that comes with it, I've reduced the front suspension to 31 to give it a little bit more mechanical grip on the front, right? So you take away grip by raising the right height, but you gain it back by reducing the front suspension. So it's give and take here. Uh, not optimal, but it's definitely the most comfortable way to drive Spain without worrying. Same thing for the rear right height. Um, you know, going to be using 70 so that it's clear over the curbs. You can go up to 75 or 80 even around here actually and you will not notice any loss in performance. And keep the rear right, uh, rear suspension sorry, at 1 because it's quite stable with that. You can probably use around 4, 5 at most if you need a little bit more rear rotation. As for the anti-roll bars, 21 on the front to keep the car stable in mid corner and gives you a good pointiness into corners. You can drop it to 19 or 18 if you just need a little bit more turn in mid corner. Uh, but otherwise, it's pretty stable on the higher end. And uh, and yes, let's move on to the bricks, so which is 153. Um, yeah, you can use around 54, 55 even, depending on the corner's uh, personal preference. And tire pressures are going to be maximum as usual for the race and qualifying. Now we move on to the second setup here. Uh, given by Mavis, uh, so thank you to him as usual, uh, well, for the second time, uh, but yeah, uh, for providing us uh, an alternative setup, uh, which I also love because it's so pointy on the front. Um, some people like a pointy car, some people like it a little bit more understeery like me, whichever, right, but uh, <coughs> you may try it. 100% uh, on the on throttle, 40 off throttle and 100% uh, engine braking. So just minor differences there. Uh, because you have so much more front wing, the car is going to be a little bit unstable on the rear. So adding a little bit of off throttle is going to help you to stabilize the car. No changes to the suspension geometry. It's the same across the board. But suspension, we have a little bit of changes here. Uh, you can definitely notice that uh, you know with the car that has a lot more front wing it's important to use uh, stiffer front suspension so that the car is a little bit more predictable when you're going through the corners and uh, everything else is again personal preference here you can increase the rear suspension if you need a slight more rotation and whatnot um, yeah brakes a Mavis specialty 99% brake bias uh, brake pressure it's no difference there actually and tire pressures are also maximum. Um, so there you go. Uh, very quick uh, two setups there. Hope you like it. It's all in the description. And I'll leave you with the full speed hot lap to enjoy. I'll leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time for Austria.